what's up everybody today we are working on the Subaru Impreza G3 2009 and uh, I'm updating the brakes I was supposed to do this this summer but I bought a house so it had to uh, come second hand in this case but ordered some new brakes some EBC brakes these are the um, ones that are perfectly fitted for this model custom ordered also with the green stuff brake pads for the prolonged life and also street racing and normal driving at the same time also got myself two cans of x1r i've been showing you these products a couple of times in my previous videos and they really do the trick when uh, loosening up stuff and uh, installing new products so uh, thanks again street performance for having such a huge discount for me as usual they've been my main sponsor for all these years when i'm starting started uh, fixing cars and having a car club so the issue here today is changing the rear brakes because they look like this and this is what happens when you don't follow your schedule and as you can see here you have a rivet in the rotor uh, it's not horrible but I can put my finger in there and it feels like a couple of millimeters maybe so a bit of slippery slope there as you can see and you also see a lot of brake dust that has been overheated and got stuck on the rim and as you can see this isn't loose this is stuck I actually uh, had the time to wash the car before coming here and I'm gonna put it on a hoist and see if I can remove everything myself I'm a bit nervous about the bolts because with such heat and such cold as it is right now during December they can be pretty much stuck. We'll see how it goes in my case. So, here we go. Alrighty pants. So this is up and loosed. And as you can see, it's heavily worn out on the uppermost part of the rotor. So what we're gonna do is first of all, we have to remove the uh, the upper part of the brake, the caliper, and these are the main bolts holding everything together. I think it's a bit hard to see here in the, in the shade, but here, this is the first one, and the second one is over, so you can see my hand, here. And they should be in the same size. And it's pretty easy, you just loosen them up, hopefully, if they're not stuck. And before starting to install everything, you have to check out the brake pads and compare them to the ones you have bought. Just to be sure that the size and the girth of the whole thing is the same part. And hopefully all the custom ordering has run through as planned. And Everything should fit together, but we'll see. All right, so the over most top of the caliper is off. And yes, you can see here, the brake pads are just over here, behind everything. Pretty easy to swap out if you're just gonna swap out the brake pads, but I'm gonna change the whole rotor as, as, as we go. You can also use a screwdriver for removing the pads because in my case they are pretty much stuck on there so I have to like hammer a little bit just to get it out I'm not so uh, I'm not so afraid of damage, jam, damaging the old brake pads but in my case I can just uh, leave the car in the garage if everything goes bad but I don't recommend using that tool if you need to reapply everything if you uh, discover that you don't have the right material and you have to go to the workshop so 
be careful using that kind of a tool. So, also another recommendation is using a wooden stick. And using a wooden tool like this actually prevents from scratches and dings and everything that you can do on the rotor by mistake when trying to pry everything up. So, a wooden stick works in a lot of solutions. And also using zip ties to fix everything to place with the caliper. You can just hang it here on your truck absorber so it doesn't get in the way because you don't want to pull the brake line and drop it on the floor that will damage the brake line so this is what i'm gonna try to figure out how to get everything off and uh, so far so good two of the bolts look pretty good so i'm gonna keep at it all right so comparing the new parts made everything uh, work of course so i've compared the both versions of these and they are spot on another accurate delivery from street performance as usual I just, you can also see that <laughs> it's falling basically falling everything in pieces i've never overshot a break like this before oh my god seriously Call check this out <laughs> there's nothing left holy crap anywho so that's why we're changing it they used to be green by the way not so much anymore just like these so uh the part was correct it's this one the dp21584 also for the subaru outback so nice little feature anywho so what i've done so far is i've squished the caliper back as you can see here the main pillar that uh, shuts everything together like this and the best tool of using that for squishing things together is just something easy like this you usually just pry boards together when uh, doing stuff like fixing doors or uh, tables or stuff like that so this is actually a wooden tool doesn't matter in this case or a small one and you use just normal hand force usually if, if the calipers works okay and I also applied a lot of X1R the yellow one inside as you can see so you can, it, it can slide uh, more easily when applied again because they usually get really dry especially the bushings so keep them lubed as much as possible and also when uh, hanging it uh, in this position it can also uh, uh, go down a bit when you're doing the rest of the installations so that's a good tech tip from my point so uh, onward with the installation all right so it was pretty easy to get everything off and uh, I also realized that the center bolt for having the connection rod and everything here is not stuck on the actual rotor as you can see here you can move that out of the way with no problems at all so I didn't have to remove anything in the center not uh, to loosen everything up so it's just removing the rotor and uh, start reinstalling everything after i've scratched all of the dirt from the lower part of the caliber because it is dirty and has a lot of friction material and stuff like that stuck on it Alrighty, so everything is off as you can see here no rotor and the shield is also pretty rusty so i'm gonna do something to do as much as possible at least uh, to scratch everything off and maybe apply some paint as well if I have the time I'm a bit pressured of time as usual when I'm doing stuff like this uh, anywho the other rotors looks awesome from EBC these are the black coated ones I've used these before and uh, highly recommended you don't need any brake cleaner or anything when installing these because the, that coating is supposed to wear off and protect the rest of the rotor so it doesn't rust up like that as you can see I've been painting the original part and uh, 
well it stands the test of time as much as possible now but now it's just completely outdated as you can see and worn out so onward with cleaning and installing this beauty <laughs> and it's starting to look really really fancy here with the back uh, rotors and uh, with the black coating and everything it just fits perfectly and it looks really sharp uh, also uh, I painted the shield with some hammer finish that's the usual for me like so just to uh, cover up the rust it's pretty rusty and uh, it's still in, in a good condition to not wear out anytime soon so better to actually paint it and trying to keep it alive as much as possible and going on with the installations pretty good <laughs> And there we go, one is finished. That took a couple of hours because I was really picky on the color and uh, paint when it comes to protecting the rust things. So uh, the disc, perfect shape, calipers fit perfectly with the EBC pads. And uh, you also have the scream protections for avoiding uh, uh, sharp sounds or when it comes to uh, heart breaking and stuff like that you have some small vibrations or well, in general they, they move around a lot when they have brake pads so this reduces sound almost to nothing so uh, a good thing they add on the EBC brake pads also put some EBC brake fluid it's uh, not really fluids it's uh, copper paste as you can see here and you put some just on the rivets uh, as the brake pads move you can use one of the new ones so as you install these ba back on the uh, mount, mount mountings they are uh, shaped like that that in uh, in metal hard to show when well, I don't have it in front of me but as you can see here there's a lot of friction in this area so you'd put some paste there as you install them back on the brackets on the caliper so just a little bit there and a little bit there so that's an, another good tip to make it all nice and lubed so it can move around so back with the tire so when installing these brake pads you can also notice that on one side you have this connection bracket I'm not sure why just one pair has, but it's just on the left left side on the back of the car on that caliper. So I am um, not sure. I'm probably going to write in the comments why this one just exists on that part. But as, as you can see on the other one, which is in far better shape than the previous one, as you can see here, it still has some had some life left. And it's still green, more or less. You can see here. Uh, and these are the same. And they don't have an extra, extra connection bracket, as you can see on this side, which doesn't ma matter in this case. So we're just going to put some, uh, some 
BBC cream here on the brackets over here so it can slide better not too much just a bit of a squeeze as you can see here just pretty easy to work with and installing the new pads Okie dokie, so I'm working on the front part of the Impreza now, and uh, it looks kind of good. There's not so much rust as I expected from visiting the backside, which had a lot of rust. These shields actually look pretty good. It has a really, really small crack here over here, so it's starting to show that it's gonna rust through uh, someday. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep doing the same thing as I'm doing on all the shields and paint them with hammer finish. But I also will uh, paint the, the connecting socket to the knuckle as well. Uh, as you can see there's a lot of rust build up here and um, that's probably going to start to show even more over the years. So in order to... Uh, reduce the rust buildup I'm gonna do my best to cover everything up with that kind of hammer finish paint also the connection to the caliper is a bit rusty for my taste as well so I'm gonna also try to paint at least the connecting bracket uh, and maybe a little on the backside we'll see so all in all everything is going as planned and here's another part when trying to clean off the uh, top caliper as the hydraulic uh, pistons inside here that squeezes the uh, the brake rotor and the pads together it has a lot of rust build up inside and that's really common and nothing to be uh, stressed out about because it's all matter is getting really hot in there and it's getting really cold in there and it's like if you live in uh, Nordic countries like Sweden or Norway etc we have a lot of snow and uh, rain and uh, pending temperatures and also we salt the roads so it's inevitable that this is going to rust up uh, so what you can do at the best of your abilities as an amateur at least is to uh, Scrape everything off at the sides as much as possible. As you can see, that it's it's uh, it's showing with flakes, flakes falling off around the piston cylinders here. And there's nothing you really can do about this other than trying to get most of it off before reinstalling everything. And also, as before, try to lube. Uh, uh, the rubber bushings that holds everything together here and when you squeeze everything together you ho hopefully you can get some in between as well here so it gets inside of the bushings as well uh, and let it uh, seep for a minute as you do the rest of the installation and painting the shields <laughs> As you can see I'm almost finished with the third caliper and changing the pads after cleaning up some of the residual dust and gravel and rust 
and uh, on this side you have again that pad that has an extra bracket thing so be sure to install these screamer protections as they're called in Swedish just to avoid uh, uh, sharp uh, metal grinding sounds that can happen with the uh, um, pads if you don't have those protectors and also these are the old ones as you can see here they're fairly worn not in any way dangerous so they actually stand the test of time on the front of the car so probably the problem was that the caliper wasn't moving as much as it was supposed to so probably it grinded it too fast but in this case everything looks pretty normal so i'm just going to start installing these onto these in the right order and don't forget to use the lube And we're done. So what should have taken a, a full day of changing brakes took three days, approximately, because of all the issues with rust and also the calipers on the right side was completely jammed. So I uh, had to use all the tools I could, even destroy the couple as well. Let's see, we have the collection here. So what worked in the end was better quality of these to squeeze everything together and this hammer <laughs> almost didn't survive the treatment so I need to correct that as well. Use different kinds of methods, you can use uh, a hammer and uh, a wrench like this and pry them apart by hand but even me with my strength it always went halfway so I had to use both of these at the same time slowly pushing everything backwards with an old brake pad that was the the best version of trying to squeeze everything together and also be aware that the reservoir of the brake fluid can overflow during this procedure because you're squeezing back all the pressure so it uh, squirted a little bit here for me. So uh, what you can do is just wrap some paper around it, open the cork, the cap, to uh, let the pressure out. And afterwards you just have to run your car for a bit, brake, and uh, because you have already anyhow need to embed the brake pads and the discs. Uh, that's the recommendation from the EBC Corporation uh, and check out the, the braking fluid levels. So by yourself just a simple can or bottle with normal brake fluid just to top everything up as you go. So this was a bit of a headache. I'm happy I could do it myself and assess the issues I found by myself because and the mechanic would never do that for me uh, and if it if it, they would then uh, I would probably be pretty broke right now so saving a lot of cash doing this yourself now it's time to go for a drive and see what happens <laughs> <laughs>